Well, let's say very warm welcome back to second half independent off tube studio commentary from the game at the GTEC Community Stadium. A bit of a late kickoff in the second half. We did have uh, a long amount of uh, injury time at the end of the first with uh, a number of injury stoppages throughout the uh, the first half. It's almost uh, sad to say that's the highlight of the first half. There really was very little happening in front of goal. Both sides are guilty of not really being able to convert the possession that they had. Wolves, as the visitors, had less possession in front of goal, but certainly would have liked to have get a couple of uh, better crosses in, get some service into a uh, Diego Costa, whereas uh, at the other end, Brentford seeing more of the ball in the first half, but really struggling uh, to create uh, anything in the final third. There needs to be an improvement uh, from both sides if we're going to see a, a better game of football in the second 45 minutes. Both sides uh, forced into a change uh, uh, before half time. Just looking at the, the two teams now, can't see that there's been any half time changes. So the teams are David Ryer in goal for Brentford with a, a back four of Christopher Ayer, Ben Mee, Ethan Pinnock, and Rico Henry. The three in midfield are Josh De Silva, Vitali Yano and Mikel Damsgaard, who came on for the injured Matthias Jensen uh, in the first half. As far as uh, the uh, attacking midfield, it's Brian and Bumo, Johan Visser with Ivan Toni uh, as the uh, frontman. Brentford had a throw on on the left-hand side. The ball was played in towards the edge of the area. Drops to De Silva, takes a shot, and then the effort deflects into the path of Mbumo, who heads it towards goal. But it's straight into the arms of Jose Sarr, who is the goalkeeper for Wolves. The back four of Nelson Semedo, Nathan Collins, Max Kilman, and uh, Hugo Bueno. Uh, the uh, two holder midfielders are Bubakar Traore and uh, Ruben Neves. The three ahead of them are Adama Traore, João Moutinho, who came on for the injury. Uh, Matthias Nunes in the uh, first half and Daniel Podence, uh, Diego Costa is uh, the uh, front man for the visitors as uh, the ball played back towards uh, Bubacar Traore spots uh, Jean Moutinho a bit of space in midfield Moutinho quickly over towards the left hand side uh, for uh, Hugo Bueno Bueno then to uh, Daniel Podence but the ball deflects back into the path of uh, Christopher Io just uh, dwelt on the ball a little bit. This is a chance now for uh, Wolves to get forward. And a great run here from Daniel Podence, who just overplays it. And he's frustrated, as indeed will be his teammates in the box, as indeed the Wolves fans who are uh, just to the side of the goal that uh, Wolves are attacking in this second half. He did well to get away from Christopher Ayer, and then he just flicked the ball with his right foot as he was carrying on his run into the penalty area and then suddenly realised that he was already on the line and didn't have enough time to actually stop the ball from going out of play. So it's uh, frustration there, real frustration for uh, Daniel Podence. But uh, Brentford now uh, with the uh, ball back in play. Just, uh, just to tell you very quickly that it's still half-time between Newcastle and Aston Villa. Uh, there was actually a second goal scored for Newcastle in injury time after the Callum Wilson penalty, but that was ruled out for offside. Uh, so just to give you an idea, it's the 55th minute in the game between Brighton and Chelsea, and it's still half-time between Newcastle and Villa. It's uh, 48 minutes gone here at the GTEC. Ivan Tony just caught with a bit of a late challenge there from uh, Nathan Collins. But you can see Ben Meat playing the ball up to... Uh, uh, Tony, just caught there by uh, Nathan Collins. I don't think the referee was ever uh, considering a uh, yellow card for that one. But uh, just to confirm that is the, the second half has now got underway at uh, St. James's. So we've still got two late kickoffs in the Premier League available on our service this evening. Uh, Fulham against Everton is a 5.30 kickoff. And uh, Liverpool against Leeds United is a 7.45 kickoff. Both those games available on our service. And uh, as far as uh, action tomorrow, there is a, uh, a game at uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow. Arsenal against uh, Nottingham Forest. And uh, Manchester United against West Ham is a uh, 4.15 kickoff tomorrow at uh, Old Trafford. Brentford on the attack now with the ball played into the uh, penalty area. Tony under pressure. The ball deflects off uh, Kilman. And that is away for a uh, corner kick in the end. So a bit of pressure here from uh, Brentford. Paying off at least with them getting this uh, set piece now. Chance to get uh, players into the uh, penalty area. You can see Tony was uh, struggling to find any kind of space really. Best he could hope for was a deflection uh, to try and get his side a corner. It's been taken short. Uh, back towards Mbumo. He then whips it into the penalty area. And it strikes and it's in the back of the net. Brentford take the lead on uh, 49 minutes. And it's Ben Mee with the goal for the home side. It's a really smart finish from Ben Mee as well. Scissors that one into the uh, the back of the net. And Brentford lead. And it's uh, been just five minutes into the uh, second half. Brentford with the goal. We'll just see from the replay if everything is okay with this one because uh, certainly I don't see uh, uh, many complaints from the Wolves players, but you never know these days. Of course, there may be something that uh, VAR has spotted. But let's have a look. It's a, a corner kick to Brentford. 
uh, taken short and played back towards uh, Mbumo. Looks like he's okay. And when the ball finds uh, Ben Mee, I mean, it's a striker's finish from Ben Mee. You've got to say that. As this ball is played across from the uh, left-hand side, Mee, side on, jumps in and scissors that one uh, into the back of the net on the volley. It's a really, really clever goal. If Ivan Tony had scored that, we'd be saying it's another great goal for Tony in his bid to get into Gareth Southgate's England squad. But uh, Ben Mee, uh, centre-back, does really well. That That's his uh, second goal of the season for Brentford. And a vital one for Brentford as well as they were really struggling to create anything in front of goal. Just to tell you that uh, Bournemouth uh, were 2-0 up against uh, Spurs. Kiefer Moore with his second goal of the afternoon. But uh, Ryan Sessegnon has just pulled one back for Spurs. So it's 2-1 uh, Bournemouth against Tottenham. That game's uh, on 57 minutes. And uh, Brentford now with this uh, lead. Uh, 51 minutes gone here. Brentford 1, Wolves 0. And Wolves need to respond now. And they're on the attack uh, straight away. Down the left-hand side here with uh, Hugo Bueno. Gets to the edge of the area. Puts a cross in. Deep cross as well. Pinnock heads it away. But it's still kept in play by Adama Traore on the right-hand side. He plays it back to Nelson Semedo. Square now to Bubakar Traore. He leaves it for Ruben Neves. What a strike that is. Uh, what a response that is from Wolves. They're level inside a couple of minutes. And it's uh, Ruben Neves with a great strike. Wolves straight away on the attack. Responding quickly after conceding. And Brentford... Uh, falling asleep in defence. Ben Mees barely had time to uh, calm down uh, from the celebration of scoring himself. And now his side have uh, conceded a goal almost immediately. Ruben Neves runs straight to that uh, travelling Wolves support. As I mentioned, Wolves are attacking the goal that uh, has their fans just to the side of it in the second half. As uh, Hugo Bueno did well. It's a great cross from Hugo Bueno. Pinnock's header isn't the best because it still st stays in play. Traore then plays the ball to the edge of the area. Semedo for uh, Bubakar Kamara, who leaves, uh, for Bubakar Traore, who leaves it here for uh, Ruben Neves. And it's a great strike from Ruben Neves. Hits it first time. Real precision there from uh, Wolves' captain to get this one. Raya barely even moved. And uh, it's a really good strike. 1-1 uh, here now at uh, the uh, GTEC Community Stadium. Well, certainly we were hoping for goals in the second half and we've had two of them inside the first seven minutes. So let's hope this is uh, your prognosis of more goals to come in the uh, second half. Uh, it's a long ball now played uh, towards the edge of the Brentford penalty area. But uh, Raya is there to claim uh, an easy ball. Brentford now are playing out from the back. And that old adage of uh, teams being most uh, susceptible to, con to conceding a goal just after they've scored one themselves is uh, proven there by uh, how Brentford just sat back. I mean, there's been virtually no opportunities for uh, Hugo Bueno to have the freedom of that uh, left-hand side in this game. And suddenly, just after Brentford have scored, he had all the space he needed to try and get that uh, cross in uh, from which uh, the Wolves' goals came. But uh, here come Brentford now, trying to uh, play out from the back. Vitaly Janot with a long ball over towards the uh, right-hand side for uh, Christopher Ayer, being closed down by Wolves' goal scorer Ruben Neves. Feeds that ball in uh, towards Damsgaard. Damsgaard now to uh, Brian Mbumo. Early cross from Mbumo it was the right idea. Just a little bit too much height there for Ivan Tony to get on the end of it. Rico Henry was breaking into the box as well, but it was a comfortable save from uh, Jose Sarp. He just waits for his uh, teammates to get a bit further forward. Shanks that uh, clearance there does... Um, uh, Jose Saab, but it's good work from Adama Troyer to control it. And he's off on the run now down the right-hand side. Great run as well from Traore, although his uh, ball into the box is easily hooked away by uh, Ben Mee. Throw to uh, Wolves now down the uh, right-hand side. You can see as uh, Traore, I mean, how much intention there was in how he did that. He just sort of flicked the ball with one foot and then uh, controlled it with the other. As I say, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt that he meant to do that, but uh, it looked <laughs> to me as though it maybe wasn't his first thought. But here come Wolves now down the left with a ball in from uh, Hugo Bueno to find Podence. And then Podence skips away from two Brentford defenders. It looked as though Podence was stopped in his tracks, but he somehow managed to get away from Ben Mee. The angle was a little bit too tight for him to beat David Ryer. It's away for a Wolves corner. But again, just far too much space here for Wolves uh, inside the Brentford penalty area. And then when uh, Ben Mee... I mean, I'm not sure what Ben Mee was trying to do there. He got a pass from Christopher Ayer at the edge of his own six-yard box. His first thought was to take a touch and to try and just play it out anywhere. I think he was trying to play it out for a corner, which seemed like a quite a negative thing to do. In the end, it's going to be a corner anyway because Podence's attempt was uh, batted away by David Raya. Here comes the corner kick, and it's a header wide from uh, Diego Costa. 
who has that uh, accusing look about him when he stands up. He Perhaps he felt as though he was being impeded. Well, he was being held onto there by uh, Rico Henry. I don't think there was ever going to be enough uh, for uh, referee Bobby Madley to uh, give a corner, uh, to give a, a penalty for that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, it's a free kick to Wolves. I didn't actually see the, the uh, foul that led to it because they were still showing us replays of the uh, header from Diego Costa. But uh, Brentford barely had time to clear the ball up to the halfway line. They've given away a free kick. Nelson Semedo over the top, down the right-hand side, looking for Adama Traore, who's been really ha ha hassled there by uh, Rico Henry. And eventually the ball deflects off uh, Henry and out for a uh, Wolves corner. So uh, certainly the, uh, the pattern of play in this uh, second half is quite interesting. Brentford started the more positive, took the lead. Wolves re uh, equalised almost immediately. And in the three or four minutes that we've seen since then, it's pretty much been all Wolves inside the, uh, the Brentford half. So certainly uh, the visitors have really uh, kicked on here. And uh, they certainly look uh, more likely to score a second goal uh, in these uh, last few minutes. There's a corner kick to Wolves now on the right-hand side. Plenty of activity inside that uh, Brentford penalty area. It's going to be an outswinging corner from uh, Daniel Podence. Puts a bit of height on this one. It's a good header away by uh, Ethan Pinnock. Second ball back into the penalty area, but that one is overhit by some way from uh, Neves in the end. And uh, out for a uh, goal kick. Brentford will certainly be pleased just to uh, slow things down for a moment or two. There's also going to be another break in player after two players that collided inside the uh, the penalty area after that uh, last corner kick. It looks like it's Ivan Tony who's uh, down for Brentford. Can't quite make out the, uh, the Wolves player uh, from uh, this angle. But let's hope it's uh, nothing too uh, serious here for uh, either player. As I say, we've uh, had some uh, fairly... Uh, we've had uh, some fairly long uh, injury stoppages in this game already. Let's just uh, hope that it's uh, not going to be uh, too long in this second half. And let's just see how it came to this uh, stoppage in the first place as the uh, corner kick comes in. It's just a collision of uh, players. I think it's actually, it's actually Diego Costa who felt as though he was being impeded. He's the one who uh, uh, bumped into Ivan Tony, And as far as uh, the Wolves man who's down, you can see that it uh, looks like it's Max Kilman who uh, collided. But we're finally going to get uh, another replay of the, the two goals. There's so much has happened since the two goals have been scored. Showing us the, uh, the Brentford goal first. It was a really good strike uh, from uh, Ben Mee. But uh, the strike from Ruben Neves, even more impressive just uh, a couple of minutes later. Uh, real frustration there for uh, for Brentford that they couldn't uh, maintain that uh, that lead for a little bit longer. To say uh, Brentford, much like Wolves, actually could pretty much get all their points have uh, this season at home so far. Uh, so it would have been frustrating for them to have uh, conceded in the way that they did so quickly. But take nothing away; it was a really really good strike from uh, Ruben Neves. Uh, much to the delight of those uh, travelling Wolves fans. So we've still got uh, over half an hour to play in this game. And we're still waiting for a uh, play to resume here after that uh, last stoppage. Ivan Tony looking a little bit groggy. He's had a tough game so far. Not had too much uh, by way of uh, service. He had a good chance in the first half where he seemed to get the ball just around about the penalty spot. And he just lost his footing when it was, seemed like he was uh, ready to pull the trigger. So that would have been uh, really irritating for him. But, uh, of course, uh, Ivan Tony. Has, uh, has had a very, very positive start here at Brentford. Unstoppable when it comes to uh, to penalty kicks. And um, I mentioned about uh, Rico Henry potentially being in that 55-man Gareth Southgate squad. You'd imagine that Ivan Tony will be in it. Whether or not uh, Gareth Southgate uh, has seen enough to actually take him to Qatar is another matter. But here come Brentford with uh, Rico Henry down the left-hand side. Uh, runs uh, straight into Nelson Semedo. And then in trying to win the ball back, he actually fouled Nelson Semedo. So it will be a, a free kick uh, to Wolves. Newcastle take a two-goal lead against uh, Aston Villa. Uh, scoring on 57 minutes uh, in that game. We'll confirm the goal scorer in uh, just a moment. Jose Sarr is down on the ground for Wolves now. And uh, he seems to have some sort of problem with his uh, right hand. So we're going to get uh, even more of a stoppage here now whilst uh, Jose Sarr is being uh, checked over. It is uh, very, very difficult to get any kind of uh, flow in this game. Every time 
Uh, it seems like the game is uh, just getting into a bit of a uh, bit of a rhythm. We get into a, another injury uh, injury break, and uh, this time it's the uh, Wolves goalkeeper that uh, needs to be uh, checked over. And this looks like uh, he seems to be in quite a bit of pain there, just as the uh, physio is uh, checking him over. Just using this opportunity just to get uh, the uh, two, get their set of respective players over. Interestingly enough, actually, Thomas Frank is actually talking to uh, Ruben Neves. I'm sure he's not giving him any tactical advice. He'll probably be uh, discussing uh, an earlier challenge, an earlier decision. But it's nice to see, actually, Thomas Frank is uh, can be a bit of a polarizing figure. Certainly, uh, quite a few uh, opposition fans, players, and managers aren't too keen on his uh, sometimes sort of quite uh, boisterous style. But it was nice to see him talking to the opposition captain there and uh, both with a smile on their face, patting each other on the back as they uh, went their separate ways. And they've got plenty of time to, uh, to talk here because uh, for the time being, uh, it looks like well, we, we had uh, a lot of activity. First of all, Max Kilman had to go off the field uh, to get uh, a bandage on his head. So there was obviously a, a cut to his head in that uh, collision with Ivan Tony uh, a few moments ago. Kilman's now being checked over. It looks like everything's okay with his shirt. There's no blood spot, so he can play on. Uh, referee is uh, just checking that uh, everything is okay with uh, with Ivan Tony, and Ivan Tony is okay to play on, as is Jose Sarr. So we can finally resume play here now at uh, the GTEC. Wolves still technically down to ten men, but it's only going to be a, a second or two before Max Kilman is beckoned onto the field. I think there's an issue here. The fourth official is just checking to make sure there's no blood spots on uh, uh, Kilman's shirt. And yes, there are. So now he's having to uh, change shirt. Of course, uh, teams travel with uh, two or three pre-printed uh, shirts these days for each player. So uh, Kilman uh, back on the field now. And uh, able to uh, play on. Third goal at uh, St. James's Newcastle. Uh, getting a real stranglehold of that game now. It was uh, Callum Wilson that put Newcastle two up on 56 minutes. But now on 59 minutes, uh, Brazilian Joel Linton makes it 3-0. As here come Wolves now with a great chance. A ball at the edge of the area. A strike coming in. It's not a particularly strong effort, though, from Diego Costa. Once again, that Brentford defence going wayward. And uh, Costa finding space at the edge of the area. But I think he just had one or two touches too many. So by the time he got his shot away, it was just a little bit flat there from the Brazilian. As uh, Brentford, Brentford, if as I say, they, they had an unofficial timeout there with that uh, injury break. And you just wonder what uh, Thomas Frank and his assistant Brian Rima were saying to the players. Because Brentford have looked a little bit uh, shell-shocked since that equaliser for Wolves. And uh, not really had any kind of attack since they scored and since Wolves equalised. Has been the visitors have looked more likely, but now a great ball forward here for Vitali Yano. He gets into the penalty area. Oh, he just loses his balance. It was Ivan Tony that threaded the ball through towards uh, Yano. In an ideal world, maybe it would have been Yano passing to Tony, but here come Wolves now. Adama Traore, one touch, takes the ball down and uh, plays it forward towards uh, Daniel Podence. Podence are running into a bit of a cul de sac there, forced to back heel that into midfield. Uh, Brentford win it back and play it towards uh, goalkeeper Raya, who clears it up towards the halfway line. And uh, Rico Henry now under pressure. Going back towards uh, Ethan Pinnock. And uh, Pinnock into Riot. Long clearance uh, from him over the top now. Ball lands uh, with Ivan Tony. Flicks that forward. Johan Visser gets away from Nelson Semedo. Visser breaks into the box. Just runs into a cul-de-sac though. Johan Visser had enough time uh, to pass that ball. But he runs straight into Nathan Collins. Who's then able to uh, clear it down the uh, uh, right-hand side. It couldn't be kept in by Adama Traore. Throw on to Brentford. Taken by Rico Henry. And uh, here is Josh De Silva into Johan Visser. Visser into Rico Henry now. Down that left channel. Henry running straight into uh, Nelson Semedo. Plays it back towards Vitali Janel. And then Janel to cross towards uh, Christopher Ayer. Ayer steps forward. Has options left and right. And he spots... The uh, pass to uh, Brian and Bumo down the right hand side, and Bumo's ball in. It's a good ball. It's headed the cross goal by Visser rather than towards goal. I think it was just a little bit too high for Visser to try and head towards goal. He headed it back across the six yard box, and that allowed Wolves to clear. As they clear into midfield, Jean Moutinho bumps into uh, Vitali Yano, and that has been given as a uh, free kick to Brentford. 
They still have a chance to get the ball back into the box. But we'll see again here as this ball uh, from Mbumo comes in. I think Visser made his mind up even before he jumped for that, that he was going to be heading it across goal rather than towards goal. But looking at the replay, he was inside the six-yard box. All right, the angle was a little bit tight, but Visser had got a great leap there. You'd like to think he could have uh, perhaps tested the goalkeeper uh, from that kind of angle. This won't be easy for Brentford to test the goalkeeper from here. It's a very central position for this free kick. So Mikel Damsgaard is going to have to be a little bit inventive with how he puts this ball into the box. He plays it to the edge of the six-shot box, headed up in the air by Nathan Collins. It's still bouncing inside the box. Costa gets ahead on it uh, before it's uh, acrobatically cle cleared with an overhead kick by uh, uh, Abubakar uh, to, to Traore. But the ball played back into the box now. Brentford with a chance. It's with Ivan Tony under pressure here from Max Kilman. And it's Kilman's touch that puts the ball out for a corner. So a corner kick to uh, Brentford on the uh, right-hand side. We're getting word of a fourth goal at the Vitality. Is it going to be 3-1 uh, to Bournemouth or 2-2? Uh, two, two, uh, Spurs equaliser, I'll confirm that uh, in just a second. But we're going to see this uh, corner kick from uh, Brentford first. A real cluster of players on the uh, penalty spot here. Pushing and shoving, trying to get themselves into a uh, better position. Now they've all dispersed. And it's going to be an in-swinging corner from the left foot of Brian and Bumo. Not yet, though. The referee just uh, calling time here. Asking for the two captains to calm down. Uh, Neves and uh, Ivan Tony. Both uh, getting a bit of a telling off there from the referee. It's Ben Davies who's uh, equalised for Spurs. It's 2-2 now at the uh, vitality between uh, Bournemouth and uh, Tottenham. But uh, Here at the uh, GTEC Community Stadium, it's a, a corner kick to Bremer. We can finally see it now. Mbumo uh, standing over it, right, left-footed in, swinger, it's too high for Tony. It uh, flashes past everyone inside the penalty area, kept in play here by Yanel. Played it back to Rico Henry, his cross is headed away by Diego Costa, drops into midfield here for Josh De Silva, does well to get away from Bubakar Traore and from Adama Traore. Traore then trying to uh, shepherd him out for a uh, throw. Brentford are expecting a uh, free kick, and I think the referee, uh, Bobby Madley, does agree. His... Uh, Lip reading, are you serious there from Adama Traore? He feels as though there perhaps there wasn't enough in that. I think uh, from Josh De Silva's point of view, he stopped uh, with the ball on the line and he gave Traore a choice. Either you let me turn with this ball, which let's face it, no professional footballer is going to let another one turn in that situation, or you run into me and, and risk the uh, giving away a free kick. And that's uh, precisely what Adama Traore has done. And so it's going to be uh, Mikel Damsgaard from the left-hand side. Oh, just a bit too high there for Tony. Brentford's crossing uh, has left quite a bit to be desired uh, this afternoon. Played back towards David Raya, who's wandered all the way to the halfway line here. Raya then pumps the ball back into the Wolves penalty area, headed away by Nathan Collins. And a second header there from uh, Mikel Damsgaard trying to keep the ball alive for Brentford. But he gets far too much uh, power on that header. And it's uh, away for a uh, goal kick to Wolves. So uh, 68 minutes gone, independent off tube studio commentary. It's Brentford 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. Both goals uh, scored very close to each other at the start of the second half. Brentford taking the lead through Ben Mee on 50 minutes and then Wolves equalising through Ruben Neves on 52 minutes. A long goal kick now taken by uh, Jose Sarr over the head of everyone though. Slight angle there on that uh, goal kick as well. Out for a uh, Brentford throw. Jose Sarr, slightly, uh, slight grimace on the face there. I think he'll be uh, frustrated with that uh, goal kick. He may also be uh, mindful of the fact that he has got that uh, hand injury. Let's hope it's nothing uh, too serious for the uh, Portuguese goalkeeper. He certainly has voted with the uh, national team in terms of uh, being on their bench. don't think he's uh, being considered as their starting keeper, but he will certainly be uh, considered as one of the uh, the goalkeepers to take to uh, to Qatar. So just uh, a few weeks to go now. Three weeks tomorrow, the uh, the World Cup gets uh, underway. But uh, in the meantime, back here at uh, the GTEC, it's a long ball over the top from Max Kilman. A collision there. Two Wolves players are colliding into Ben Mee. And uh, referee Bobby Madley deciding that it's the, the two Wolves players that are at fault. And uh, Diego Costa with his uh, traditional arms aloft, very frustrated. Uh, Daniel Poddance is down on the ground. Uh, it's still in quite a bit of pain here. The uh, Wolves number 10. Let's just wait and see if there's anything uh, too serious for him. Well, 
what's happened there is that uh, Diego Costa has jumped into Ben Mee, and that's what the foul's been given for. And as Mee is then hitting the deck, having been fouled in midair, he then falls into uh, Daniel Podence, and that's how Podence has ended up uh, in a heap on the ground. Diego Costa still can't quite believe it, still trying to argue the case with our referee. But so, as I say, it's been a, a busy afternoon for uh, for Bobby Madley in terms of having to call on physios and uh, injury time and everything else. He's only had to give out uh, the the, uh, uh, the one yellow card so far, and that was to uh, Nelson Semedo uh, inside the first minute of this game. And so, I take it back. There was also a second. There was also a booking for uh, for Daniel Podence as well as a fourth goal for uh, Newcastle at uh, at home to a uh, Villa. So, as I say, the four goals that uh, Villa scored against uh, Brentford last uh, Sunday completely wiped out by the four goals they've conceded at uh, St. James's this afternoon. And it's, it's that man again, Miguel Almiron, a player who was so tricky, so difficult to stop, great on the ball, but just had very little end product. That was how he was often summed up until this season when he really has found his uh, scoring boots. And as I say, I've not seen the goal, but I'm assuming it's not going to be a tap-in from two yards. They rarely are with uh, Miguel Almiron as a game, uh, the play under, uh, back underway here at uh, the GTEC. And it is Wolves pushing forward with uh, Daniel Potters as well to control it. And then finds Adama Traore, who's bumped into by uh, Vitali Yano. That is a free kick to Wolves. And I'm not sure Yano can have any complaints. The referee's given a couple of similar free kicks in Brentford's favour. Christopher uh, Ayer was uh, pushed over by uh, Traore earlier for something very similar. And I think the referee... Uh, is right to give that uh, free kick to Wolves. Ruben Neves is getting a bit of a telling off from uh, Bobby Madley as well. I think uh, as captain, he probably felt as though he could have asked for a yellow. That's never going to be a yellow card for Yano unless Wolves were uh, insisting perhaps on some sort of uh, yellow card for an accumulation of uh, fouls. In which case, I suppose it's... Uh, it would be a, a fair shout, but uh, just a free kick for now. No booking, and it's uh, João Matinho standing over the ball. He's just been told by Bobby Madley to wait for the uh, whistle. And we are going to see this uh, free kick from uh, Moutinho over from the uh, right-hand side. He lifts this one. Oh, well, the idea was to try and beat the offside trap and get a Wolves player to attack the ball, but he doesn't get any anywhere near enough uh, whip on that one, so the ball just driven into the hands of uh, David Raya. There just wasn't enough time for any Wolves player to get anywhere near that. And then Riot rolls the ball out towards uh, Josh De Silva. De Silva with a long diagonal ball towards the edge of the Wolves penalty area. But that one was more hit and hope rather than being uh, particularly precise. No chance of uh, Brian and Bumo uh, getting on the end of that one. Well, we're into the last uh, 18 minutes of this game. And so I would guess that we're probably going to see three or four minutes of injury time in this half as well. It has... Uh, that's been, have been a, a fair few stoppages. A long ball now for a Diego Costa to chase, but David Raya is out just comfortably. Uh, flicks that ball towards uh, Christopher Ayer, whose clearance is charged down by uh, Daniel Podence. Out for a uh, throw to uh, Brentford on their right-hand side. And uh, we're getting ready to see an attacking change here for the Brentford. It's uh, Keen Lewis Potter uh, getting ready to come on. And I would guess this would be either for Mbuma or Visser. Visser very rarely plays a full 90 minutes for Brentford. He either comes off the bench as an impact sub or he starts the game and gets taken off. So I would guess it probably would be Visser uh, that will be going off for these uh, last 15 minutes or so. But uh, Thomas Frank could uh, surprise us and take off Mbumo. But uh, neither player has had a particularly uh, distinguished performance this afternoon. But if I was going to give ratings, I'd probably give Mbumo a 6 and Visser a 5. I've just not seen enough of uh, Johan Visser in the game. But uh, here is Mbumo now getting a pass from Miguel Damsgaard, breaking into the penalty area. And he lifts the ball in. Oh, it just gets away from Damsgaard. It drops to Josh De Silva. Who hits it. Good save. There might still be a rebound, but the ball just played away from the edge of the six-yard box. De Silva really put his left, left foot through that. It was a good save, but uh, no Brentford player could capitalise on the rebounder. Uh, Wolves defenders reacting quickly to get that one away and uh, reacting quickly here down the uh, left-hand side. Now for Wolves is uh, Hugo Bueno, but he runs uh, straight into uh, Christopher Ayer, who then uh, clears the ball down the uh, right-hand side out for a throw to Wolves. But it's Nathan Collins. It looks like he got the, uh, the telling block uh, inside the uh, penalty area. After the ball was uh, sliced clear by Kilman, fired towards goal by uh, uh, De Silva. In fact, it was uh, Collins that uh, stopped De Silva's effort going on goal. A little bit of pinball after that, but so the ball, uh, as far as Wolves are concerned, fortuitously landing with Kilman, who managed to get a hook on that one just before uh, Tony and uh, Visser went for it. So is that Brentford change? Confirmation that uh, Keane Lewis Potter is on. 
Uh, just waiting for confirmation as to who he's replaced because they didn't actually show us uh, the Brentford man going off the field. Camera just focusing, and it is Johan Visser. It was uh, a fair shout that he would be the one going off. So uh, Visser is off, and uh, Keen Lewis Potter is on. And he's got uh, exactly 15 minutes as we uh, hit 75 minutes here, independent of Tube Studio commentary. It's uh, Brentford 1, Wolves 1. Just looking across uh, at uh, the other games, no changes. So it is uh, Bournemouth 2, Spurs 2, Brighton 3, Chelsea 1. The uh, goal for Chelsea scored at the start of the second half by Kai Havertz. Uh, uh, Palace still lead against Southampton by a goal to nil. Newcastle lead against Villa by four goals to nil. Here come Wolves, though, with a uh, great run down the uh, left-hand side from uh, Ruben Neves. He breaks into the box. He strikes at the near post, saved by Raya. And then the ball cleared to the edge of the area where Brian Mbumo is trying to get the ball away here for Brentford. He uh, plays it down the right-hand side, but uh, it won't reach Mikel uh, Damsgaard. Back with uh, Wolves in midfield. Kilman. In towards uh, Traore, who gets caught in possession by uh, De Silva. But De Silva just lost his balance there. Traore just about getting enough on it as Raya comes out from his own goal and makes a bit of a mess of the clearance. He gets enough on it, but he probably would have liked to have got it a little bit further as uh, Ben Mee now just slows things down for Brentford, finding uh, Vitali Janel, who then plays a long quarterback style ball towards the left hand edge of the penalty area. And it's a good ball as well uh, to uh, pick out Keen Lewis Potter. His pass in uh, towards Henry is just a little bit under hit. Those are those little fine margins that you just need to get right in uh, in these games. As we see this uh, previous move here with uh, Diego Costa uh, breaking in from the uh, left-hand side. Dummied went on to his uh, left foot, but the strike was uh, straight at uh, David Raya. As uh, Lewis Potter now trying to dance away from two Wolves players. Couldn't quite manage it, though. And the ball now cleared up towards the uh, halfway line. Headed forward there. And uh, out of play. So, uh, ball now uh, down the uh, right-hand side from uh, Wolves' point of view. I think that uh, if you asked either manager now, would you take a point? Of course, uh, neither Thomas Frank nor Steve Davis would say yes. I think both of them would say that their side have uh, still got enough about them to try and uh, go on and win the game. As I say, Brentford need to win their home games because they're not getting many points away from home. Wolves aren't getting many away from points uh, away from point. Uh, they're not getting many points away from home either. I'll get my words out eventually, and so that means that of course, if they see a, a side on their travels that they can just about get past and get a win over the line, then it's crucial that they do that. And so here come Wolves now with Kilman. Good run from him. Gets uh, a ball uh, into the penalty area here, Max Kilman. But uh, a bit of a shame there in the end. Diego Costa standing there in the penalty area, thinking, well, hang on. There's uh, a centre-back and a left-back going on the attack, and they've bypassed me completely at the edge of the box. So uh, Costa, uh, a little bit frustrated with that one. Brentford, a uh, restart play here with a short ball from Riot. Josh De Silva now to uh, Henry on the uh, left-hand side. Back in towards uh, Pinnock. And, uh, Brentford still trying to put this uh, pressure on Wolves. In the last uh, stages of this game, but the ball over the top is uh, just a little bit over here. And uh, Rico Henry couldn't uh, quite uh, keep that one in play. So, yeah, Wolves with just the one change so far. Mateus Nunes uh, replaced by uh, João Martinho uh, on 41 minutes. That was still in the first half, and that was uh, forced by injury. Brentford making two changes. Uh, yeah, uh, with Jensen replaced by Damsgaard due to injury and now uh, Lewis Potter on in the last few minutes uh, to replace him. Um, Bumo Brentford lose possession inside the Wolves half. Chance here now for the uh, visitors. It's good work down the left here as well to get the ball in. Hugo Bueno looking for uh, Diego Costa. Oh, the ball just uh, gets away from him after a good jump there from uh, Rico Henry. And uh, Brentford able to uh, clear their lines. It's with uh, Lewis Potter now down the left-hand side. Runs uh, straight into trouble, though, and uh, he wins his side a free kick as well, although the Wolves players can't quite believe it. And the referee is calling over. I think this is going to be, is this Christopher Ayer for an accumulation? The referee allowed uh, a couple of uh, uh, bits of, a uh, little bit of contact there. If I even think it might have been Brian Mbuma who tried to, uh, to stop his man down that uh, Wolves left. The uh, Brentford right. And uh, you can see that... Uh, Mbumo's a little bit unhappy here, but let's have a look. It was when uh, Hugo Bueno was off down the uh, left-hand side. Yeah, there's a shirt pull there from Mbumo, and uh, Bueno, to his credit, carried on running. But I'm not sure that Mbumo can have too many complaints. 
Referee uh, gave the advantage but uh, brought it back and remembered about it to give uh, Mbumo the yellow. Uh, uh, now Brentford are getting ready to make an attacking change. Another attacking change. It's uh, Sergi Canos getting ready to come on. And I would uh, bet that it may well be for Mbumo that uh, Canos is going to come on here. I'd be surprised if they uh, messed with their back four or indeed the uh, the midfield three. So Mbumo on a yellow card. And he's done a lot of running this afternoon without too much end product. It may well be that he gets the hook towards the end. But uh, here is uh, Lewis Potter now. Got the ball from Josh De Silva. Plays it into Ivan Tony just a little bit under here. But then De Silva does well to win the ball back for Brentford before eventually Nelson Semedo clears it long. Poddens is chasing, but Christopher Ayer should get there first. And he does well there. Ayer showing a bit of strength before he was clipped by Poddens. And uh, referee gives uh, Brentford the free kick, which is uh, taken quickly with uh, Ethan Pinnock now up towards the halfway line Josh De Silva finding uh, Rico Henry his ball down the uh, left hand side and finding uh, Keen Lewis Potter or oh, he nutmegs uh, Collins and breaks into the penalty area but then he can't uh, quite get past uh, Nelson Semedo sold one dummy couldn't sell the second one but he wins his side a corner with uh, nine minutes plus injury time to go Brentford have a uh, set piece here Wants to uh, try and test the uh, Wolves' defence. So we can see, once again, a whole cluster of players. We've had uh, eight corner kicks in the game. Brentford with three, Wolves with five. And uh, I'll say that uh, cluster of players just about to disperse in now, like Brentford like to do for their uh, set pieces. It's going to be a left-footed outswinger from Mbumo from the left-hand side. Oh, he puts too much height on that. Easily headed away by uh, Ruben Neves. Nobody in a red and white shirt anywhere near where that ball was landing either. So either it's the Brentford players in the box in the wrong position or it's Mbubo not putting it uh, where he was supposed to. But a throw to Brentford down the uh, right-hand side and it's uh, Ethan Pinnock uh, waiting to uh, take this one. Just uh, waiting for his uh, teammates uh, to get into uh, a better position. And there's no one short this time, so this isn't going to be a dummy short throw. This is going to be a launched ball in by Ethan Pinnock, and it really is launched into the penalty area. Headed forward, a great chance in now, and it's headed wide. Ivan Tony from just a few yards. The ball was flicked onto him off the head of uh, Lewis Potter. It drops to Tony. I think he was perhaps just stretching a little bit, but uh, it seemed to me like there's nobody marking him. No offside, and Ivan Tony missing a header from inside the six-yard box. After a bouncing ball, it eluded Ben Mee. It dropped to Lewis Potter, who was uh, hoping for an assist with his head. But it's uh, not to be. The ball goes wide, and uh, Brentford making a double change. And it's a surprising one. It is going to be Christopher Ayer who's goes, who goes off. It's uh, Mads Rudslev to replace him. So, the uh, Norwegian replaced by the Dane. Well, that doesn't really narrow it down at Brentford. There is a strong Danish contingent. Perhaps uh, comparable to the one uh, to the Portuguese one at Wolves. It's a, uh, a triple change though for Brentford because uh, Mbumo and the Silva are uh, going off as well. Mbumo has been replaced by uh, Sergi Canos, and the uh, Silva has been replaced by uh, Frank Onyeka. So those are the uh, changes for uh, Brentford. As far as Wolves, they've also uh, made a change as well with Adama Traore uh, replaced uh, for these uh, last few minutes. And he's been replaced uh, by uh, Gonzalo Guedes. Uh, so those are uh, the uh, changes. Just to confirm those again uh, momentarily. But uh, the ball is now back in play. And uh, Brentford trying to push forward. Sergi Canos claiming that he was brought down there. Referee agrees. And this may well be a, uh, a card as well. It looks like it's a booking for uh, Ruben Neves, the Wolves captain. He's now with a chance to try and get this uh, ball into the penalty. The confirmation that uh, Gonzalo Guedes replaced Adama Traore and a triple change for Brentford. Christopher Ayer, Josh De Silva and Brian Mbumo go off to be replaced by uh, Mads Roslev, Frank Onyeka and uh, Sergi Canos. Free kick to uh, Brentford about uh, 35 yards out. Slightly over on the right-hand side. But still bordering on being central really. So there's not too much of an angle for uh, Mikel uh, Damskar to work with here, but that's not going to stop him trying to generate some kind of ball into the box. So, Jean Martino just uh, screaming at his uh, teammates there to watch the offside because a couple of Brentford players, I think, purposely are stood offside as we're waiting to see this free kick. Damsgaard is uh, now ready to put this uh, ball into the box. 
Lifts that towards the edge of the six-yard box. Jose Sarr comes out and claims it. It's a follow-up effort from Rico Henry from all of 30 yards. That was on target, but that's a good, smart save. Uh, still in position there was uh, Jose Sarr. He saves that, bats it away, and it's cleared for a throw to Brentford uh, down the right-hand side. Well, Wolves were certainly in the ascendancy just after they equalized, but you have to say the last uh, 10 minutes are looking much better for Brentford now. Had a couple of uh, really good chances, and that's a uh, chance from Henry and uh, from... Uh, uh, from Ivan Tony in particular, although the strike from Henry just now uh, also forced a good save uh, from Jose Sarr. Long throw from Pinnock into the box. It's uh, headed up in the air before it's uh, cleared away. Clipped back into the box now by uh, uh, Rico Henry. Uh, just uh, The clearance just eludes uh, the... Well, there's going to be a free kick now to, to Wolves. Brentford are unhappy here because uh, Mikel Damsgaard's claiming it was accidental. Um, but the referee, Bobby Maddy, I don't think is too interested in that. He's uh, given it as a free kick to the visitors. And so there still seems to be a problem here. I think it's uh, Poddens who's caught by Damsgaard. As we have a fifth goal at the Vitality. Fifth goal at the Vitality. And it is a uh, third goal for Spurs. So it's Bournemouth 2, Tottenham 3 now. And it's uh, Rodrigo Bentaker in injury time, making it 3-2 uh, to Spurs. So a complete reversal there for uh, Antonio Conte's side which they needed, I think, after that debacle of the uh, late-night VAR against uh, Sporting Lisbon in midweek. So the fact that they were two down at Bournemouth, you can imagine uh, Spurs fans, uh, not known for their patience, probably all panicking on social media by half-time, so they can relax now. Things looking a lot better uh, for Spurs on the south coast. Things looking worse, however, for uh, Chelsea on the south coast, because in injury time at uh, the Amex, it's now 4-1 to uh, Brighton. Trossard on five minutes made it 1-0 to Brighton. Then Loftus-Cheek with an own goal made it 2-0 on 14. Shalabar with an own goal on 42 made it 3-0. Kai Havertz pulled a goal back for Chelsea on 48 to make it 3-1. But now Pascal Gross uh, on uh, uh, in injury time at the end of that game has made it Brighton 4. Chelsea 1. We've got another stoppage here as uh, Daniel Podence is uh, being checked over now. As I say, it's... Uh, Taking an awful long time to, uh, to get everything uh, back underway in this game. Looks like we are going to be uh, seeing a similar amount of injury time in the second half. We saw six minutes and then we had an extra minute and a half added to that by the referee. I'm not sure if we'll get a full seven minutes in the second half, but uh, won't be far off it, I don't think. As uh, Podence now just trying to uh, skip off that uh, injury. Just uh, hopping on that... Uh, Left leg, making sure that everything's okay. Thomas Frank with one of his assistants. Not uh, Brian Reamer, but one of his uh, set-piece specialists there. Always uh, trying to find just another way of uh, perhaps getting that uh, late winner. Both sides would love a winner in this game. As I say, uh, Brentford in their last uh, five home games have uh, two draws, two wins and a defeat. Uh, they say they would love to be able to get a late winner here. But Wolves, from their point of view, think they can get a late winner on the road now. That really would uh, give them a bit of a bounce. Uh, considering that uh, a draw today will uh, see them rise a place in the table. Uh, jump one place ahead of Leeds United uh, by one point. But Leeds already have a game in hand on Wolves. And that's before Wolves have played today. So uh, uh, Leeds will be looking to try and uh, make up that difference. Uh, when they play in the late game this evening away at Anfield. That certainly won't be easy, but uh, Liverpool perhaps not quite the team that they have been in the last few seasons. So uh, Jesse March's side will see that they have uh, at least half a chance. If they can start well and not concede early, then uh, Leeds certainly have enough about them to make uh, and make things difficult for Liverpool. Though the uh, early evening game looks like an interesting one as well. Fulham, who surprised a lot of people in how well they've uh, started their Premier League campaign against an Everton side who seem to be improving now under Frank Lampard. But this is a great chance for Wolves. Brentford have pushed too many players forward and Wolves on the counter-attack now as the ball breaks into the box. Uh, Guedes tried to feed that ball into uh, Diego Costa. Brentford just about recover their lines and clear towards the halfway line, but it uh, could have been a lot worse uh, for the Bees. Wolves back in possession now with uh, Daniel Podence. Uh, runs uh, straight into two Brentford players and it really is a toss of the coin as to which one of them uh, committed the bigger foul there. I think Damsgaard probably bumped into uh, Podence first but it was the uh, collision with uh, Vitali Janel that probably uh, caused the referee to actually... I mean, it's, he's not tried his hardest to stay on his feet there, Podence, but why should he? Two Brentford players are bumping into him. I think he's uh, more than entitled uh, to try and get his side a free kick there. 
And Wolves have this free kick now <coughs> in the last uh, 30 seconds of uh, regulation time. It's all over at uh, Stamford. Uh, it's Stamford, but it's all over at the Amex where Brighton have hammered Chelsea by uh, four goals to one. That's certainly a bit of a, a cold shower to the uh, promising start that uh, Graham Potter has made at uh, Stamford Bridge. But uh, here this uh, free kick for Wolves played into the penalty area, headed away by uh, Ben Mee. It's out for a uh, corner to the visitors. It's also uh, finished at uh, the uh, Vitality. It's finished at the Vitality where Bournemouth have uh, lost by two goals to three against Spurs. A great uh, reversal there for Spurs who were two down after 50 minutes. But uh, a bit of a show in the uh, last half an hour. Seven minutes of injury time have been added to this uh, second half. And uh, we're into that uh, injury time. Now you think the officials would spare us, really, considering how this uh, this game has gone for long periods. But uh, the Wolves corner kick uh, played in and quickly cleared uh, back into midfield. Daniel Podence uh, taking a touch here for uh, Wolves and gets the ball into the box, which is uh, quickly uh, cleared away by uh, uh, Frank Onyeka. Out for a uh, throw to uh, Wolves down the uh, left-hand side. The ball played uh, back in uh, towards uh, Semedo. So Nelson Semedo now on the right-hand side, lifting across. Not enough lift on it, though. Easily headed away by Ben Mee. It's a fight for it at the edge of the area with uh, Lewis Potter uh, trying to uh, keep that ball in play for Brentford. Doesn't manage it, but he does actually get a deflection off the Wolves' mound. So it's a uh, throw uh, to the home side. Down their left-hand side, played back in towards uh, Ethan Pinnock. Tyler Janelt now into uh, Frank Onyeka. And uh, ranging forward now. Down the uh, right-hand side is uh, Mads Roslev, who tries a long ball to the edge of the Wolves penalty area. Jose Sarr is there, heads it out uh, back into midfield. As uh, Bubakar uh, Traore was under a bit of pressure, he plays a quick ball down the uh, right-hand side, which then isn't kept in play by João Moutinho. And uh, Roslev does well just to bounce the ball off him as well to win uh, Brentford a throw on their uh, right-hand side. Still got uh, over five minutes of injury time to play here. At uh, the uh, G Tech. And uh, Brentford now win it back after a bit of a poor clearance from Max Kilman. And it's uh, Onyeka bringing it forward for Brentford. He finds uh, Lewis Potter on the uh, left hand side. Potter's ball into the box, headed away by uh, Kilman. Still kept in play. Might still be a chance here uh, for uh, Canos. Canos has a chance to cross it, puts it onto his uh, right foot, maybe one touch too many, lifts it, and it's too much height, not enough whip, and it's an easy save. In the end, uh, for uh, Jose Sarr, who's uh, unhappy there with Ivan Tony. He felt as though Ivan Tony had uh, bumped into him there deliberately. Referee Bobby Madley agrees. And it's a, a yellow card for uh, the Brentford captain as well. Yeah, Tony has uh, taken over uh, skipper duties whilst uh, Pontus Janssen is still uh, recovering from injury. Free kick to uh, Wolves now inside their own penalty area. And uh, perhaps it's uh, no surprise that uh, they're not uh, rushing here, Wolves. Although there's still, I would argue, there's still uh, enough time to, to get a winner here. I think both sides perhaps just a little bit timid in committing too many men forward. Uh, it's all over at uh, Selhurst Park. A 1 0 win for Crystal Palace. Sonna Edward on 38 minutes. Uh, the first half goal giving. Uh, Palace all three points there against Southampton as a strike from Gonzalo Guedes at the edge of the area is charged down here for Wolves. It's cleared back into midfield, but Wolves recycle it now with uh, Bubakar Traore into Diego Costa, whose flick wasn't the best, and that's uh, been won back by Brentford. They take a quick free kick after Costa had tripped his man. Uh, Sergi Canos now on the halfway line for uh, Brentford, been marked by uh, Traore, and it's far too easy there from Canos. He hits the deck with his arms aloft as if he felt as though he was fouled. There's never a foul on him there. And uh, there was a foul, though, on uh, Daniel Potters, the referee quite rightly playing an advantage because Wolves are still getting forward. Now it's Josh De Silva who's uh, brought down by Diego... Uh, 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 sorry, it was uh, brought down by Diego Costa. And I think the referee... Would have been well within his rights to book Costa there, because that's two uh, pretty cynical fouls inside a minute there from the Brazilian. But uh, here is uh, Hugo Bueno now with a left-footed cross. Uh, cleared away by Rico Henry. Kept alive here by uh, Bubacar Traore. Out towards the uh, right-hand side now for uh, Gonzalo Guedes. Guedes uh, back in towards... Uh, Back in towards Ruben Neves as uh, Brentford now back in numbers. There's a real tangle at the edge of the uh, Brentford penalty area. And there's a, uh, a Brentford player down, but Wolves are playing on. It's headed out of play by Diego Costa. 
And so say the referee wasn't interested. There seemed to be a bit of a strong collision there between uh, Diego Costa and uh, one of the Brentford players. Still can't quite, uh, quite can't quite make out uh, who that was. But uh, let's just see from uh, this angle. Look to me as though Costa there doing what he did just to try and. Uh, Get that uh, ball in, and now they are checking. But what are they checking for? They're checking for a potential red card for uh, Diego Costa. Yeah, there's an attempt at uh, a headbutt there from Diego Costa. Uh, I mean, the referee, <coughs> knowing how long VAR can take, by the time they've checked this, and then asked Bobby Madley to look at that, and he has to then think about it. I mean, looking at this again, Ben Mee has got his arms up as well, trying to uh, trying to push back at Diego Costa. So you could argue that. Uh, ben Mee's involved there as well, but is there a real is there a real headbutt from Diego Costa, or is it just a coming together there? That's the question uh, for VAR to try and answer here. And uh, looking at uh, the review, I think that uh, Bobby Madley is uh, going to have to go and uh, look at the replay here, or is he going to be uh, saying play? No, he is going to be looking at the uh, replay himself. As I say, if anybody's got plans after this game, you're going to have to just uh, delay them slightly because uh, we are already into six minutes of injury time. We're going to see even more if it turns out that uh, there's going to be a red card here for a Diego Costa. I don't know what side to come down on with this. I think that there is an attempt at a headbutt from Costa, but it's just whether or not they classify that moment when he's tried to... Is he trying to headbutt Ben Mee or is he trying to actually get to free of Ben Mee? Bobby Madley, on his return to Premier League refereeing, has shown a red card to Diego Costa. Diego Costa with his hands in that prayer mode, but it's going to be too late for the uh, Brazilian veteran. It's a straight red for Diego Costa, brought in as a, a striker to try and improve uh, Wolves' uh, opportunities to get goals. But here, Diego Costa with a, uh, a red card and uh, potentially, uh, if this is going to be a three-game ban, then we're not going to see Costa again uh, before the World Cup as uh, Steve Davis looking uh, very frustrated there. And I mean, and it's, it's one of those where I can see if the referee hadn't given a red card for that, then I suppose it's one of those where we've seen players getting uh, retrospective bans. I was always seemed to remember it was Richarlison when he was still at Everton, wasn't he? I think as away at Bournemouth a few seasons ago where he got a, 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 a three or four game ban for an attempted headbutt. He never actually made any contact with the opposition player, but he was suggesting that he could do a, a headbutt if he wanted to. And for that, he got a ban. So I suppose on that basis, if Diego Costa has made any contact with Ben Mee whilst holding him by the, by the shoulders and moving his head towards him, I think it's very difficult to say that it's not a red card. So uh, it's one of those where I'm sure that uh, Steve Davis will have his own views on whether that should have been given as a uh, red card or not. We're over the seven minutes of injury time, but uh, don't pay any attention to that. We're going to see a little bit more time here. In fact, the game at St. James's, which uh, started after us, is now finished. So we're the only Premier League game being played now uh, from the three o'clock kickoffs. And we're less than half an hour away from our 5.30 kickoffs. So, uh, Mr. Madley, if you wouldn't mind probably do with seeing the end of this game now. Everything's just gone very flat and very quiet since that uh, red card. I think both sides are quite happy to uh, to draw stumps here, but it's uh, uh, taken a long, uh, goal, goal, long free kick taken here by uh, goalkeeper Jose Sarg. It's all the way to the edge of the Brentford penalty area where Raya comes out and then boots it long himself. Uh, it's uh, kept in play here by Max Kilman, who uh, volleys that uh, back towards the uh, Brentford penalty area, headed away by uh, Ben Mee. Now the ball drops here to uh, Ruben Neves, who uh, thought about uh, uh, playing it long and just uh, plays it square to uh, Semedo in the end. Uh, back towards uh, Nathan Collins. And we're into the uh, final, must for surely be the final few seconds as Jose Sarr just takes a step forward. He almost uh, ran uh, straight into uh, Vitaly Janelt there, but he just about kept the ball for Wolves. It's now played long up towards Guedes, uh, only partially cleared. Still a chance here for Wolves with uh, Daniel Podence. Plays it short now towards Gonzalo Guedes. Guedes into the box, trying to uh, trick away from Pinnock. Leaves it now for Ru... Oh, it's a shot from Matinho, which... Uh, I think the referee had actually spotted a, an offside in the meantime. Anyway, David Ryan made a bit of a mess of catching that one, but it wouldn't have mattered because uh, the... 
Free kick was uh, given in any case. Referee then looks at his watch and calls time here after a full nine minutes of injury time. A full 16 minutes of injury time we've seen in this game. But uh, the game has been starved of quality, although we saw two great goals. So one from Ben Mee and then a moment later a goal from Ruben Neves. That pretty much is it. It's all over at the GTEC Community Stadium. It's finished. Uh, Brentford 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 1. From myself, Paul Shabakovich, thank you very much and do join us again soon.